sense, connecting sight, sound and life. Panto in PJs with Sense Arts by Extant. Hello everyone, my name is Joy and I am a black female. I have brown hair they're actually little tiny little braids at the moment and i have black glasses on with some gold on either side and it feels quite ridged uh, the little gold pattern on each side of my glasses i have a gray wall behind me and i am wearing a pink pajama top so it has light pink and dark pink stripes going all across it with me i have angela who will introduce herself in a moment and we would like to welcome you to panto in your pjs yes hi i'm angela and i'm in a different room from joy i am a white woman with shoulder length dark blonde hair. The room I'm in has a big white wall behind me. Now, for panto in your PJs, I'm wearing my favourite red dressing gown, which is very warm, very soft and very comfy. Scents are committed to people living creative and active lives. So this session is auto-described, captioned and BSL interpreted. Our workshop is inspired by the Sense Art Connect Manifesto, created by visual artist Tanya Rabber Weber. We are going to explore the themes of the manifesto of being bold and curious, finding joy in the challenge, seeking new experiences, and connect and be connected. Today, we are going to give you the tools that you need to create your very own pantomime at home, focusing on two characters. Oh no, we're not. Oh yes, we are. Oh no, we're not. Oh yes, we are. Now let's get started. Pantomime is a Christmas tradition in the UK, but it actually originated in Italy from something called Commedia dell'arte that's used all year round. The idea is to create big, recognisable characters that you could recognise from the back of a theatre or the top of an Italian village hilltop with big movements like I'm doing now, raising my hands above my head to symbolise a character. So, although it's a Christmas tradition in the UK, the characters are usable throughout all of your stories. That's why today we're going to look at two of pantomimes, well, some would argue most important characters, the hero and the villain. And by the end of this session, you'll have two of your very own pantomime characters to either make your own show, your own one person show, or find someone else to make a show with at home, playing the villain or playing the hero. So we want you to fire up your imaginations. You will need props. They are listed in the YouTube description, or there will be moments in the video where you can pause, go and find your prop or watch the workshop right to the end and then go back, find your props, do it all over again. Okay, I think you're ready. It's time to panto. So I'm gonna tell you all about a hero. In panto, there is always a hero and the hero saves the day. The hero is the best. A good person. If you have seen any pantos before, you may have heard of a hero such as Dick Whittington or Peter Pan. Peter Pan is a very good hero, but a hero can be anyone that you like, anyone that you look up to. For me, if I was to pick my hero, it would have to be my mum because she always saves the day for me. And if I was to think of what would I need to do to act like my mother or sound like my mother or what, what prop would my mother have? I know I would definitely need 
a cup of tea because my mum loves tea. So when you're thinking about your hero character, I want you to think about who's a hero to you. And remember that in pantomime, the hero always wins. So I'm going to think of a, a, a brand new hero and I'm going to think, how would my hero move? How would my hero sound? And what prop would my hero need? So, my hero is going to stand very tall. And how we're gonna do that is, my hero will stand with their feet slightly apart. They're gonna stand with their spine as straight as they can. And they're gonna stand with their shoulders back. So if we can all try and put our shoulders back, we need to have a strong chest and make sure your head is facing forward but high as if you've got a string on the top of your head from from the ceiling okay so make sure you're staying very tall very strong my hero may even have their hands in a fist and put their hands on their hips and and a sound or a phrase that my hero may say is never fear as i am here what would your hero say also my hero would need a cape because my hero will be flying all around the world to save people. But I'm at home, so what do I have to use as a cape? Bear with me. I'm just going to get this lovely purple magical blanket and I'm going to wrap it around the back of me, wrap it around my shoulders, and this purple blanket is now my hero's cape because my hero needs to be able to get around. So I'm just gonna sway left and right with my arm out so that my cape has room to blow in the wind. Now, Angela, what would your hero have? My hero would stand tall place one hand on my hip and hold my other arm up high. I'm holding in my hand a spoon that's hard and cold and feels like a sword. And I would say, equal rights for all. Wow, Angela, your hero looks great. Now, this is the time where you at home can pause the video, if you like, and go and find a prop to become your hero. Okay, and if you want to do that at the end, then you can do that as well. But it's time now where you can act as your hero. Now, every panto needs a villain. They are the baddie. They're still strong, they're still clever, like the hero, because they need to make the hero look good when the hero wins. But they are evil and they always want to destroy whatever the hero wants. Okay, so think of a baddie from a story that you know. Mm, if you've ever seen a pantomime, you might know Captain Hook from Peter Pan, who's always trying to ruin everything and destroy the lost boys. Or the evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Or King Rat from Dick Whittington. Okay, now you've got an idea in your head about a baddie. Um, it's time to make our villain. And if you don't have an idea, don't worry, you're about to get one. Okay, so first of all, we need to think of a movement. Think of how it feels when you feel evil and powerful. What do you do with your arms? For me, I put my arms together and I move slowly, reaching my arms out to the side. Yes, because I'm powerful, I don't need to move quickly. I glide when I walk, softly and gently across the room. Okay, now think about a sound or words that a villain might say. Um, think about an evil witch, they cackle. <laughs> Whenever they come into a room, that's the sound that I'm going to make for my villain. Now, villains in pantomimes often disguise themselves because they want to trick the hero so that they can get 
what they want. So for me, I'm going to disguise myself today like the Queen in Snow White does. I'm going to disguise myself like a little old lady. So I've got my scarf, my red scarf, and I'm wrapping it around my head and around my body to completely change what I look like. So I can go from a powerful, very graceful villain to a little old lady in disguise ready to trick you. Joy, what does your villain look like? Oh, I don't like villains very much. But if I was to be a villain, I think the prop that my villain would have is a pink cardigan to use as a disguise. My pink cardigan will go on my head as my hair. And if my villain was to have a movement, it would be to creep around very quietly and very slowly so that nobody knew I was really evil. And if my villain was to have a sound, it would be <laughs> a very fake and evil laugh so that nobody suspects me, a lovely pink-headed lady, as a villain. Okay, great. Now that you have the tools to make your villain, you have the the sound, the movement, and the idea of a prop, it's time to pause the video and go and find your prop and start playing as a villain. Find a sound, find the movement that works for your evil character. One important thing to remember about the villain is that when you're in the audience, if you see or hear the villain, you get to boo as loud as you want or raise your fists in the air and shake them. Let's practice. After three, everybody boo or shake your fists or wave your arms in the air. One, two, three, boo! Very good. Okay, so remember, we want you to be bold and curious when creating your villain. So try different moves, different sounds. Be curious and open to exploring your character. Don't just settle on the first thing that comes into your head. We also want you to find joy in the challenge of finding a prop for your character. Like Joy, when she found a pink cardigan and completely transformed formed herself by using it as hair to be a very evil villain indeed. We also hope that this is an opportunity to connect and be connected either with someone else. If you're with somebody doing this workshop, you could both try being villains. How does that feel? How do these characters interact with each other? Or one of you be a villain, one of you be a hero. What story do these characters tell together? Or if you're on your own, really think about connecting with the character. So what feelings does it bring up to be a villain? Do you like it? Do you feel powerful? Or, or do you not like it and feel like you wish you weren't a villain? What's motivating you and this character? And finally, we hope that you enjoy seeking the new experience of creating a villain, or indeed your very own pantomime. So now you have all the tools that you need to go away and create your very own panto so if you're at home and you're alone you can be a hero or if you're feeling naughty you can be a villain you choose you decide if you want to do it with your friends and your family you can do that and remember you can use any prop that you have around the house like i use my blanket and my cardigan so make sure you use what you have <laughs> oh yes, boo, 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 hoo. Now, I don't care if you had fun at a panto in your PJs, but 
We hope that you did. Thank you so much. Bye. Logo Extant. www.extant.org.uk. Sense. Connecting sight, sound and life. No one left out of life, no matter what.